So we're here uh, in mid to late February of 2023 between a couple of series of big atmospheric rivers that have come down. And what you can see is all kinds of uh, woody debris um, deposited on the beach here. Um, so this stuff washed down in the wake of all these uh, high water, high floods, high, high water movement stuff. And so you're seeing a lot of Arundo, non-native Arundo. But then um, an indicator, which you'd see at any kind of time we have at least a little bit of rain, what we also see is larger woody debris. So, so in our beach surveys, we, we call woody debris something larger than your forearm in diameter, but there's various definitions. But the point is, these big giant wood logs need a lot of water movement to get mobilized. Dr. Heyrich, do you have anything to say about debris coming down rivers? Well, with the Santa Clara, if we were able to get an aerial photograph right now, we would see that a big plume of the muddy water, lots of density differences between fresh water and salt water, and there'd be a pretty clear dividing line separating this canal of the river from um, the ocean, yeah, from the seawater. And uh, it just an idea of how much water is actually coming down. I don't know what the discharge was or is right now, which would be interesting to see at this point, but the amount of debris is just going to stay here for a really long time. Uh, it's going to take a lot of wave energy to take that back off. So one thing that, that's important to know about our Southern California coastal watersheds is that we're, they're extremely flashy, very highly variable systems. So um, when we talk about the average flow, the average rainfall, the average that stuff, that's all a mathematical construct. That's all a fake, well, it's not fake, but it's all a, a way to sort of communicate um, something about scale. But people take that to think that that's a real thing. These systems are mostly, our coastal waterways in Southern California, Southern California, by mostly dry and then very wet sometimes. So, so um, the, year that I interviewed here, way back when, when the university was starting, um, 2004, 2005, there was huge rains, and the Arundo piles here were 15 to 20 feet tall, as far as the eye could see. So obviously this mobilization, there's less less organic matter going into the sediment right here, but, but when you get some of these big honking storms, they really move. And we forget because we've channelized these systems, channelized these riparian systems, and we think that we control them. St. Francis Dam disaster, all these things um, were an insane amount of more water and then material movement through these coastal watersheds. And we just forget that. We get used to seeing this as a heavy, this is a heavy amount of deposition on this beach system, a heavy amount of mobilization. If you had a house here, that would be a problem. That'd be a, a risk, a hazard. But we kind of think that this is the hazard. And this is a little teeny tiny minuscule amount of potential hazard. And there'll be more river mouth. So we're just seeing when it's going to come back this way. Since, although the current is generally from north to south, um, we're still going to get some flow coming back towards the north. And that's how this is getting here. Otherwise, it's stopped by the jetty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, so, so we like to fix these systems. So that, yeah. so that fence, that hasn't moved, right? And we're standing right now on a little, a little bluff where we've introduced this non-native ice plant from South uh, Africa. And the idea here is to stabilize. So all we see all these, all these dune cliff structures here. The intent was to add vegetation to hold the sand because we, we, we don't like to have things to be dynamic in our society. We want to have the line be here. We want to have the house be here. We want to have the parking lot be here. And the reality in terms of disaster planning, coastal management, all these things, is to understand that these are really dynamic systems. And you should never get fooled in thinking that because it looks like this today, because it looks like this last week, that that's the way it quote unquote will always be. You have to give it space to be variable in terms of where the actual Mm. I, have a, I have a question. Yes, what's your question? So one of the things that people comment on is when they come to the beach after these storms, uh, see these lemons down here? Like they feel like it's a unique 
adventure kind of thing to have lemons <laughs> on the shore. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, could you speak to that? So, so uh, well, I, I, first I'll say that when people like Dr. Hyrick or other hydrologists or geomorphologists, one, a great thing to measure the flow rate in systems is a piece of citrus, an orange or a... They, they, they tend to they tend to float, but but a little bit dense, so they kind of just be on the surface. So they're a great marker of the sur movement of the surface water. Having said that, um, uh, these guys are this is an indicator of just how much citrus we have in our watersheds. So we have a lot of citrus. Uh, I'd say the most common thing up and down the California coast: golf balls. So everybody and their brother smacks golf balls off the bluffs or off their house. So the most common human marker I've seen that is round is actually a golf ball, but I'd say citrus is that. Do you have any, do you have any citrus comments? No, I agree. When we're in stream systems such, in, such as in Sycamore Canyon or the Santa Monica Mountains, we're interested in trying to identify what the flow rate is and we don't have equipment with us or the channel has too little flow to actually use the equipment, that we often use citrus. Yep. So, although, in the, in the late afternoon. <laughs> Not a potato, citrus. The, <laughs> no potatoes. No tomatoes. No tomatoes. <laughs> but sometimes what happens is um, when the ground is heating during the daytime, in the later afternoon, you have air, you have flow directions so that go upstream. And so it's not uncommon to have whatever we're floating and measuring to move upstream. You know, mm. Thank you. So Santa Clara River Mouth, Ventura Harbor Beach post uh, post rain event. Lots of woody debris. And then the other thing is that occasionally they'll dredge Ventura Harbor and uh, Channel Islands Harbor, but where we're seeing erosion occurring here, the are occurring. They're going to take that material that's in the harbor, bring the big pipes out, and redeposit all that material. So we're basically nourishing. It wouldn't be here except for the nourishment of it and the debris that we see. What do we do about the tires? That's my last question. Tires? Oh, there's all kinds. So yeah. we're talking about organic matter, carbon that plants have grown, but obviously everything else comes down as well. So human trash, waste. Um, so tires are a class one because they're rubber. They tend to float. They're they're very easy to see, but. I mean, just right now, it might, might not be able to see it on the video, but I see styrofoam cup, styrofoam cup, I see a plastic bag, I see a clamshell, I see, there's all kinds of stuff. So the closer we look, we'll see more um, human detritus uh, that is um, a classic fingerprint of humanity now. And people t tend to say, oh, the answer is people should be better about putting their garbage in garbage bags and stuff. No, I mean, they should be, but, but no, what's going on here is this is just an, an element of our society. We produce so much, so many materials, plastic being the most conspicuous one, uh, that they, it just leaks. The system is leaky. And so no matter what we do, if we're going to have single use items that don't go into a, a closed waste stream every single time, we're going to have our beaches and everything littered. We are the bottom of the, of the watershed here. So whatever gets captured anywhere up in Ojai and wherever the heck, Santa Paula, whatever is going to come down here. So, um, so tires, etc. And this person, I'm just going to point out, is, is using a tire as a Yes. Seat. There you go. So there, you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go.